So the last few weeks in church as we as we celebrate Advent, you know, starting four weeks out, we've looked at uh, several movies, some of the classics, if you will, modern classics. Uh, we looked at uh, The Grinch, and we we found out that The Grinch was Grinchy because he didn't know what Christmas was all about. The Grinch thought it was, the, from what he saw and heard from the people in Whoville, he thought, that he thought it was about presents and about stuff. And he was, he was surprised towards the end of the movie when he took all the stuff and they were still celebrating Christmas. And his heart began to grow and, and he asked the question, You know, maybe, just maybe, Christmas is a little bit more. Then we looked at Elf. Do you like Elf? Elf had the code of the elves, right? Every day should be like Christmas. There's room, believe it or not, you ready? There's room for everyone, for everyone on the nice list. And the best way to share, Christ, to, to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loud for all to hear. And we talked about how God is so present and real in everything. And how God broke into the world and into your life and my life and into our community. And we should celebrate that. Every, every day should be like Christmas. And how, uh, how we're forgiven. He came into the world to let us know that. That there's room for all of us. We also looked at a Christmas story and saw how, how Ralphie and the quest for the Red Rider BB gun that he was going to shoot his eye out with. There were, there were glimpses of the character of God in that movie. And last Sunday, yesterday, we looked at a Charlie Brown Christmas. Have you seen the Charlie Brown Christmas? Charlie Brown was kind of like the Grinch. He wanted to know what Christmas was all about. He was sad and depressed, and he saw everybody around him joyous and running around and happy and couldn't figure out why he didn't feel right. And he went on a quest and he talked to a friend and, and his friend uh, really didn't give him much attention. And then he went to a professional and, and paid Lucy to, to give him advice. And she was right on with her diagnosis, but just told him to get busy, you know, solve the problem, get busy, do some stuff, just take your mind off of it. And he did some stuff. He got involved as a director in the play and, and it got worse. He started, started yelling, like, ah, what is Christmas? Doesn't anybody know what Christmas is all about? And, and Linus comes up and he, and he recites part of the scripture we read. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. That's the answer. And you saw in that moment that, that Linus dropped his security blanket because he didn't need it. Because in the midst of, of Jesus Christ, We don't need a security blanket. He is our perfect security. And what I wanted to share with you all tonight is what does that mean? So Christmas is all about the birth of Jesus Christ coming into the world. But what what does that mean? What do the scriptures that we read mean to you and to me in the real time? Right here and right now in 2014, right? And that was a joke, sorry. (laughs) I'm a little jet lagged. 2018, what what does it look like for us? What does it look like for us who have, who have grandchildren or who have children or who have parents? What, what, what does it look like when tomorrow morning under the tree are presents? 
What do they mean? So we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And as he came into this world, he came into the world to empower us and to teach us how to live. But even more than teaching us how to live, he gives us what we need to live. So he, he came on the scene and started his ministry, and he ran into a lot of people who had a lot of needs. Some people had tangible needs. They, they were poor. They didn't have food. Some people needed healing. And there are numerous stories in the scriptures about how he went about and met their needs. One in particular was a, a woman had had suffered for years and she talked to her friends, tried to figure it out. She, she, was, she had this hemorrhaging, bleeding thing going on and, and then she went to doctors even and they couldn't figure it out. She, the scriptures tell us she spent all the money she had to try and get better. And for years this went on. She heard Jesus was coming through town. She said, well, I've tried everything else. Let me go see if I can just touch his clothing. Just get close to him. She ran, cut through the crowds, because, you know, Jesus is a rock star. Right? He had, he had his 12 disciples, but he had tons of people following him around. And he was on a mission. He was going to heal a little girl. But this woman knew he was coming by. So she cut through the crowds and she just reached out and she touched his, his garment, his clothes, his shirt. And she was healed instantly. Have, have you ever in your life, and this is more for the adults, kids, but have you ever been, been so hurt by something and tried to fix it every way you could and just not been able? Maybe you're here tonight and there's still this, this pain or this hurt, or something that you need healing from. Maybe you've been there and you've come to Jesus. You've given it to God. And, you, and you're, you're here tonight and you're a living testimony to the healing power and the freedom that you've gotten from God. He's come to heal and to provide and to meet your needs and empower you. And when, when we celebrate on Christmas, him breaking into the world, we're celebrating a Savior who comes into our lives and in real time helps us and carries us and meets our needs and heals us. He tells us how to live. He gives us the wisdom to live. Over and over, Jesus was telling his disciples all, all along, and he was teaching, and he was teaching some tough stuff, but he boiled it down for them and for us. Fortunately, they wrote it down. They recorded it for us in Scripture. He said, if, if you want to really live life the way that it's meant to be lived, if you really want to feel life, love others as I have loved you. And he tells them, I've come into the world to save the world, to forgive sins, to let you know that you're not just some piece of biology floating around in a universe on this little dot of a planet around the sun, that, that you have a purpose and that you are loved by the one who created all that is. And not only do you have a purpose, 
but he's here to help you achieve that. He wants you to. He loves you. He's more concerned about you, maybe, than you're even concerned about you. And the message is simple. Love others as I have loved you. And you'll experience life anew. You'll experience life in a way that's transformative for you and your family, for our whole community. In fact, Christianity changed the world. A lot of the stuff we in our country we just take for granted. The freedoms and the empowerment that we've seen and experienced over the years. And it all comes from our Christian core as the world has changed and as we learn to live in better, healthier, more satisfying, and more meaningful ways. So tomorrow, when, when the presents are under the tree and you're, you're tearing them apart, and you, you know, at like three in the morning, and, <laughs> and, and it's so exciting, you know, the truth is that you're God's gift. Jesus came to let you know that all of that excitement you feel about the gifts you're opening, God has that much excitement for you and for your life. He wants you to succeed. He can empower you and he gives you the wisdom to live it out. So I'm just so happy to be here and celebrate Christmas with you. I'm so happy that we have a God who loves us, who broke into the world to show us the power of healing, the power of forgiveness, the power of grace, and most of all, the power of love. So as we, uh, we all get to light our candles. And as you receive that light of Christ, as you receive it, receive it as a light from God signifying how much he loves you. Just take it and know.